Sugarland Church of Christ Virtual Gospel Meeting Revival. We want to thank everyone for tuning in this evening to be able to hear this great gospel message. For the ones who are members of the Sugarland Church of Christ, for the ones who are members of the body of Christ around the world, we know that you will be encouraged this evening by the message you will be able to, to hear. Also, the ones who are not members of the body of Christ, we know that you'll be uplifted and you'll be able to share the message as well. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, we ask you to Address them to our email address, info at slclc.org, or you can call us here at the building, 281-561-0881. My name is Jimmy Holman, and I serve here in the capacity of deacon, 
And we thank you so much for tuning in with us on this evening. Let us together pray. Our righteous Father, thank you so much for this day and the blessings of this day. Father, thank you for allowing us this opportunity to be able to engage in this outreach and effort this evening. Father, we pray that this word will reach ears that are tickling to be able to hear the gospel and be able to share that good news and they'll be able to ask that age-old question, what must they do in order to be saved? Father, we pray that you'll be able to guide us through this uh, program on this evening and Father, it'll be successful and you'll be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen.
Our speaker this evening is Randall F. Tucker Sr., the Minister and Evangelist for the South Union Church of Christ in Houston, Texas. Randall is a native of Nashville, Tennessee. He's an alumnus of Tennessee State University and Nashville School of Preaching. Randall is a motivational speaker and is recognized on a local, state, and national levels. His professional career is a corporate sector as representative of a divisional of assessments, former educator of public school system teaching science and history. Also, he served as a basketball and a volleyball coach. This is his 20th year in ministering, speaking in lectureships, preaching and gospel meetings and ministering in Texas and in Tennessee. Randall has uh, a gift of ministering to those persons from all diverse backgrounds by illuminating the word so it applies directly to today's world. He comes from a pedigree of preachers as the third generation of his family to preach the gospel. Randall and his wife, Erica, have three children. And now, I introduce to you Randall F. Tucker, minister of the South Union Church of Christ. Rose with all power in his hand. Jesus rose with all power in his hand. Well, in his hand, they tell me that. In his, yes, in his, they tell me it was early one Sunday morning, just before the break of day. I heard that it was early one Sunday, and just before, just before the break of day, they tell me that he rose on a Sunday morning, just before. power in the his, yes, in the his, and Jesus rolled with all power in the his, I'm bad about it, because he knows my name, he rolls with all the power in the his, and oh, in the his, and they tell me that he died on a His well in his, and they tell me that an angel came down and he rolled the stone. Or maybe the angel came down with power and glory and rolled the stone away. They tell me that an angel came down and he rolled. Jesus rose with all power in his will in his Jesus rose with all power in what a wonderful morning when Jesus rose with all power in his my Lord in his and they tell me that he died on Friday Sunday morning and Jesus rose with all I'm Jesus rose with all Jesus rose with all power and his my Lord in his hand. Amen. Amen. Hello and greetings, family and friends, saints of God and lovers of the truth. Uh, we salute you in our Savior's name here from the South Union Church of Christ just across town in Houston, Texas. It is a supreme delight and a spiritual ecstasy for us to sit here and assemble virtually as we receive spiritual nourishment and encouragement for our souls. 
to the Sugar Land Church of Christ, to your fine leaders, and to your ministering evangelists, our friend, Brother Lewis Parker IV, and of course, your bishops, your deacons, your ministerial staff, and to all of the faithful there at Sugar Land. It is always a delight to see you as we study another portion of God's holy and divine word. Uh, we bring all of the superlative saints from the South Union Church of Christ. We are online, real time, for tonight's lesson, and we've already had a wonderful week thus far. We thank those that have come before us, and we want you to know that if you're listening here on tonight, we pray that something is said that will encourage your soul. Now, I don't have long to get it on. If you would, find your Bible, locate your scriptures, meet us or beat us to the book of Exodus, the sixth chapter. The book of Exodus, chapter six. The book of Exodus, chapter six. We have been given an assigned topic as you continue to study from this theme on this week, perceiving God's presence in perilous times. What a fitting theme, what a fitting thrust uh, as we continue to walk with the Lord in these turbulent times, yet we know that God is still faithful. Is that all right? Somebody take a moment, just type into the live chat right now. Say, God is still faithful. In the midst of our ups and our downs, God can still be counted on. Exodus, the sixth chapter, verse number one, you should find these words. Uh, then the Lord said unto Moses, now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out on and a great judgment and I will take you to me for a people and I will be to you a God and you shall know that I am the Lord your God which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will bring you into unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give it to Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob and I will give it to you for inheritance. I am the Lord. If that's in your Bible, just say amen. Take a moment and encourage somebody from this text. God's promise in peril. God's promise in peril. Family and friends, the word peril is a very important word that is necessary to our spiritual vocabulary. This word peril indicates immediate danger, extreme exposure to injury, loss, or complete catastrophe or destruction. Uh, we know that as we live in this current world, we are all going through some times of testing. I wish I could stand here tonight and tell you that life is always easy. It is always plain and simple. It is always palatable and kind. But no, life is filled with ups and downs. Life is filled with highs and lows. Life can make you smile and life can make you frown. Life can make you moan and groan. Life will give you good times and bad times because life is ever changing. I'm so thankful, family, that the God we serve is a mighty good God. Our great God is holy in the midst of what we're going through. Our great God is a covenant keeper 
in the midst of our trials and even when we are pressed against the wall, God still provides a way. It's encouraging to know that we're not in it by ourselves. You see, we are not the prototype for suffering, for pain, for heartache and heartbreak. God has already shown us what he can do in our lives when we learn to just trust him. This sounds like a good place for us to lay down our anchor because even in the midst of what we're going through right now, God can still make a way. Is there anyone here online with me tonight that know that God is a bridge over troubled water? God is a way out of no way. God can make us stand strong in the day of adversity. We don't have to fret. We don't have to fear. We don't have to wonder. We don't have to whine. We don't have to whimper. We don't have to cry. We don't have to run from danger because God is with us. And the people of God needed to know that God's presence was still with them. They were concerned because they had been placed in Egyptian bondage and they were under oppression for a long, long time. As a matter of fact, in this sixth chapter, uh, they began to question, they began to wonder, they began to fret and even worry because God has not come through like they were hoping for him to come through. In other words, God did not move on their schedule, but God kept his schedule and he found them right on time. That's a word of encouragement for those that are listening even right now who are going through times of immense testing and immense trials. God may not come when you want him, but his schedule will always provide for him to come right on time. So in this sixth chapter, Here's what God is doing. He is reassuring his people that I have not forgotten about you. Every now and then, we need some reassurance. We need to know that God is walking before us. We need to know that God is standing with us. And we need to know that God has our backs. Who am I talking to in here on tonight? I need to know that God is with me. And he is a protector even in the time of peril and crisis. And so as we consider this text of uh, God's promise in peril, it is important for us to illuminate and elucidate that God is reassuring and reaffirming his holy actions with his chosen vessel, his chosen leader, Moses. And so he reminds Moses that this battle is really not yours. He reminds Moses that I've given a covenant to your forefathers and I have sworn with an oath that I would bring them into the land of promise. Anybody here needs to know that God has not forgotten about you. I know it feels like you are all alone sometimes. I know it feels like you are by yourself, but God has not forgotten about you. They become frustrated because they've already prayed. Uh, turn with me to uh, Exodus, the fourth chapter, Exodus, the fourth chapter. And let's examine uh, verse number 30. The Bible, the word of God reads here, uh, and Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people and the people believed and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked upon their affliction, uh, they bowed their heads and they worshiped. I need someone to see right along through here that they believed God, that they trusted God, that they obeyed God, that they were waiting for God. And yes, even they worshiped God. However, even in the midst of their worship, they were still oppressed. Even in the midst of their worship, they were still slaves. God told Moses and he gave the instructions to Aaron that he was going to deliver them. And when he commissioned Moses and Aaron to go up to Pharaoh's house and to tell Pharaoh to let God's people go, Pharaoh became full of 
pride and he was haughty and he became stiff necked. And instead of him listening to the wise counsel and the wise instruction of Moses and Aaron, the Bible tells us that he made it harder and more burdensome on the people of God. Amen, somebody. Oh, family, even when you worship family, it does not mean that you won't have to go through some times of difficulty. I need someone to plug in right now. And I know that we worship God. I know that we give of our means. I know that we participate in all five acts of worship. I know that you love the Lord. I know that you sing your song, but in the midst of it all, even when we worship, sometimes we still have to suffer. I know we don't want to suffer. I know we don't want to go through, but sometimes it can become very disheartening and discouraging when you are doing all that you know how to do, but you are still under oppression the children of israel they worship god and now they're waiting on god to meet their request but he does not come when they want him to and so frustration begins to take hold of their minds i need to plug in here parenthetically that even while we are living sometimes we are going to be frustrated even while we are living as christians and as children of god sometimes we're going to wonder sometimes we're going to look around Around. We want God to show up, but we want him to show up on our time schedule. Well, God doesn't work like that. God knows what he's doing and God, watch it now, knows the end from the beginning. I say God knows the end from the beginning. He sees you in your plight. He sees you in your predicament. He sees that you are in peril. He sees that you are in pain, but he has not forgotten about you. So the text goes on to say that the Egyptians made it harder on the people of God. Instead of lightening the load, they intensified their persecution. And so by the time you gather yourself into chapter five and in, into chapter six, uh, the people of God need to be reassured. Every now and then, family, we need to hear a word from the Lord. And so now God has answered their prayers and his plan is kicking into action. It's coming into fruition. And so he says unto Moses, I want you to know that there are three things that are getting ready to take place. Someone write this down, type this into the live chat. There are three things that are getting ready to take place. Uh, number one, verse one, uh, Pharaoh will drive you out. Someone says, Pharaoh will drive us out. Now watch this now. Uh, the word Pharaoh is important, but the person of Pharaoh is even bigger than the position that Pharaoh holds because the person of Pharaoh indicates times of suffering, times of trials, times of testing, yes, even some moments of adversity, whatever is standing in the way between you and your God, God is still big enough to move it so that you can grow. I need somebody to know that God is with you. He's a very present help even in the time of trouble. I've learned, family, that sometimes pain helps to accelerate our blessings. Amen? I say sometimes pain helps to accelerate our praise. You will never get to the point where you can praise the Lord the way he deserves to be praised unless sometimes pain is on your backside. Do I have a witness in here? Sometimes we have to know what it's like to go through so that we can appreciate what it's like to come out of it. Who am I talking to in here on tonight? We have to know what it's like to go through some things so that we can appreciate what it feels like to come out on the other side. When we come out on the other side, we come out with a testimony. So the Bible says that Pharaoh will drive you out. How many of us would be stuck, stagnant, and even stale had our problems not pushed us to pray? Problems sometimes push us to pray. We've learned that God will meet us in prayer time. We've been praying for our family, praying for our health, 
praying for our loved ones, praying for this world and this community. And sometimes God positions us and allows pain to find our address because it's only when pain finds us that we are pushed to pray and that we can develop an attitude and a posture of praise. And so the Bible says that Pharaoh will drive them out, but watch verse number six. Verse number six says, wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Watch this now. And I will rid you out of their bondage. Watch this. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment. Someone needs to know that while you are being driven by your problems, God can still bring you out in his due season. The Bible tells us uh, as God rehearses and he wants the people to know, I am the self-existing one. This, this phrase, this vernacular, uh, this terminology, I am, meaning that God is the self-existing existing one. He does not need a co-signer on his account in order for his credit to still be good. I say God is able to exist all by himself and without God there is nothing that that is able to stand. You see God has this ability where he is able to bring us up bring us out and bring us over. And he says he's going to do it by an outstretched arm. Now watch it. This is not uh, anthropomorphic language to say uh, that God has an arm, but it's to say that God's ways are powerful. I don't know who needs to hear this on tonight, but I'm encouraging you not to give up on God because God's ways are powerful. God is able to move your enemies out of the way and not even kill anyone. God is able to bring you to where you ought to be and not step on anyone to bring you to the top. God is able. God is able to give you hope in the midst of your helpless situation. God is able to give you joy in the midst of your journey. God is able to give you strength in the midst of your struggle, God can bring you out. And I like the text because the text hinges upon who God is that God can do what he has planned to do. We need to remember that God is the self-existing one. This word, he is God almighty, mean he is El Shaddai. Oh, talk back to me somebody. He is El Shaddai. All the power that exists, God is the source of it all. I say all the power that exists, God is the source of it all. You've heard of political power. Uh, you've heard of uh, uh, thermal power. You've heard of uh, man power. You've heard of horse power power. You've heard of soul power, but God is the highest power. He is, yes, El Shaddai. Well, now in verse number eight, in verse number eight, watch what God says. He reminds the people, uh, and I will bring you, watch it now, I'm going to bring you out, but I'm going to bring you in unto the land concerning the which I did swear to give to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob. And watch it. I will give it unto you for an heritage. And watch it. The guarantee of his blessings goes right back to the character of who he is. He says, I am the Lord. Now, when you put all three of the pivotal and powerful points together on the same page at the same time, you have Pharaoh on one side and he's driving the people out. That's force. Uh, that's pressure. And yes, that's even oppression. That's pain. That's peril. And that's struggle. 
But then on the other side, you have God saying that as he drives you out, I'm bringing you out. Amen, somebody. Uh, God allowed Pharaoh to drive them out. So that he could bring them out. And why did he do this? Because God knew that on the other side of their pain. And on the other side of their problems. And on the other side of their peril. And on the other side, yes, of their predicament. There was a promised land that was awaiting them all. God says, I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to redeem you. But now I'm going to bring you in. And is there anybody here who needs God to bring them out and to bring them up and then to bring them in? Well, now the only way that you're going to make it into the promised land is that sometimes you have to have some pressure applied behind you how in the world are you going to make it uphill as you climb the hills of life unless there's some pressure being applied to the rear of you i need somebody in here who's been waiting on the lord to help me close that i see pharaoh and he is the peril he is the problem but bigger than that i see the provider who says, I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to use Pharaoh to drive you out. I'm going to bring you out. But when I bring you out, I'm not only going to bring you out, I'm going to bring you up and I'm going to bring you over and I'm going to bring you in. Well, somebody, as I close, all of the promises of God that show us how he can provide a blessing in the midst of our peril is all centered on one fact. And that one fact is that he's God all by himself. He is God El Shaddai. He is God Almighty. Now this word El Shaddai in the Hebrew tongue yeah, speaking of the nature and the essence of who God is. Now, no wonder we have to go through some problems. No wonder we have to go through some pain. No wonder we have to experience some peril because we have a provider who's trying to get us over, yes, into the promised land. I learned that God, by saying I am, it means literally that God is. It is in the present tense, which means that God will never become outdated. God will never become uh, antiquated. God's blessings will never expire. God's help will never fade. God's strength will never get low. God's wisdom will never run out. God's way will never become cloudy because God is God. Yes, all by himself. God is, I think I ought to tell you that God is El Shaddai. He's Lord God Almighty. I think I need to tell somebody that God is El Elyon. He is the most high God. Somebody needs to know that God is Adonai. He is the Lord and the Master. Somebody needs to hear that God is Yahweh. He is the Lord Jehovah himself. He is Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. He's Jehovah Ra. He's the Lord as my shepherd. He's Jehovah Rapha. The Lord that heals. He's Jehovah Shema. The Lord is them. He's Jehovah Sit canoe, the Lord is our righteous. He is Jehovah Mekadesh, the Lord that sanctifies you. He's El Olam, he's the everlasting God. He's Elohim, he's God Almighty and God, a singular but plural unity all by himself. He is Jehovah Jireh because the Lord still provides. He's Jehovah Shalom. The Lord is my peace. He's Jehovah Sabaoth. The Lord is the Lord of hosts. 
Is there anybody here who needs some hope for tomorrow? Is there anybody here who needs some joy to keep on running? Is there anybody here who needs some peace for what they're going through right now? I've come today to tell you that God can be trusted in the time of your peril. God has not forgotten, forgotten about his promise in the time of your predicament. God has not forgotten about the promise that he gave you that you would make it, that you would be able to come out, that you'd be able to come up, that you'd be able to get over, that you'd be able to carry it. And whatever you can't carry, God will lift it for you. I'm so thankful. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. I'm so thankful, family. Come on now. I'm so thankful that God is still at work. You may not see how he's moving behind the scenes, but God is able to sustain you and to bring you into the promised land. He did that for the children of Israel. And this entire account of what he did in the lives of Israel is a sterling example of what he can do for you and for me. Oh, it's, it's a wonderful privilege to be a child of God. And it's a wonderful thing to know that yes, I'm going to have to experience some time of testing. Pressure is going to be on every side. But without pressure, sometimes there can be no progression. So if you want to make progress in your life, you've got to have some peril coming from behind. You've got to go through some things. I've got to experience some highs and some lows but in the midst of it all I can still trust him and I can come out on the other side with a testimony and tell you how nobody but the Lord brought me over family we're going to make it you are going to make it you were designed to handle exactly what you're going through I know it may not feel that way sometimes, but God has you in the hollow of his hand. Do I have a witness tonight? Someone take a moment and encourage somebody right now in the live chat and tell them that you're going to make it. No matter what you're going through, you're going to make it and God is still with you. I say amen and praise God. We thank God for his tremendous blessings. And we thank God for allowing us to be here even on tonight. And let me tell you, my friend, if you've not put Christ on in baptism, what are you waiting for? I mean, what are you waiting for? Uh, right now is the acceptable time and, and God wants uh, your soul to be saved. And if you're going to make it, you cannot make it without King Jesus. You need to know that Jesus Christ died for our sins and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day. And he's alive right now, even forevermore. He makes intercession for us. He's our mediator. He's our barrister. He's our advocate. He's our attorney. He's our legal defense. And he is our savior. Put him on in baptism. Or perhaps you're already a part of the family, but you need to rededicate your life. Do it while you can. Do it while blood runs warm in your veins. And let God continue to lead you into the holy of holies once this life is no more. The Lord will add you to his church and you can leave here rejoicing because now you know you're going to make it even in the time of peril. May God bless you. May God keep you. Thank you so much for this preaching moment and this preaching opportunity. And may God bless my father's children. Have a good evening. Good night.
tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the Savior. The Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace. To trust him more and Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, Brother Randall Tucker, what a magnificent job. Brother Tucker is the preacher at South Union Church of Christ here in Houston, Texas, and he did a magnificent job in addressing his topic, God's purpose in Pearl. We know that whatever we go through in this life, there's a purpose behind our suffering. Brother Tucker, thank you for reminding us of this tonight. We thank you for our listening audience for tuning in with us. We hope, trust, and pray that you tune in tomorrow night as well. It will be the final night of the gospel series, and we'll have Brother Samuel Pounds on the topic, God's uh, power in Pearl. So hope, trust, and pray that we see you tomorrow night uh, also. God bless you. We'd like to thank everyone who's tuned in with us for our Wednesday night gospel revival uh, message brought to us by Randall Tucker by way of Nashville, Tennessee. Thank you for those edifying words, and we pray and trust that those words will be used to help us in our Christian walk. Please bow with me. Our Father in heaven, the great God that you are, we only approach our throne of grace, asking you to forgive us of those things that we've done contrary to your will. We're thankful this evening for a message from Brother Tucker. That, uh, we pray that it inspire us to be better Christians and improve our daily walk with you. We're thankful for uh, you allowing us this opportunity of prayer. We're thankful for uh, just being able to uh, gain some insight and being better Christians for you. Again, we pray for your church here at Sugarland that we will continue to reach out into the community and that uh, through uh, this teaching this evening, we will become better equipped. We pray for those who are uh, in bereavement. We pray for those who are traveling. We ask that you give them traveling grace. Again, we thank you, thank you for just allowing us to worship together in spirit and truth. So I pray in Son Jesus' name, amen. God will provide when I was down in the valley low. To the mountain high Now I must tell Wherever I go I know that my God Will provide Do you remember Tenyo Down in the lion's den Or the fiery furnace where the Lord stepped right on in No matter what your trials or your circumstances My God can move many mountains If you put the problems in His head When I was down, when I was down oh, In the valley oh, I know He lifted me up He lifted me up To the mountain to the high I know, I know that's my God, God.
provide. We'll provide. Do you remember the lady with the issue of blood? Or how God saved Noah from the waters of the flood? Has the Lord ever come through for you in your life? Then I know and I can testify that my God will provide when I was down. When I was down, oh, He lifted me up to the mountain high. Oh, now I must tell. Wherever I go, I know that my God, my God, He will provide. Child, such a love when your father's not around. You're looking for money when your bills are overdue. You're sick in the bed and then you can't find a cure. My God will be there. You can rest assured when you're down and out and you're feeling mighty blue. You got storms in your life and you don't know what to do. Just get on your knees and you can testify that my God, He will provide. He will provide.